Welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's of interest to you, then consider subscribing. Hi guys, welcome back. This video is going to be concerning the topic of sarcopenia. And I know I've made videos about sarcopenia before. If you're not familiar with what sarcopenia is, it is the loss of muscle and just general tissue with age, with the aging process. So this video is gonna be focused on sarcopenia, but also specifically about hospitalization. If you've ever been injured, if you've ever uh, gotten injured or your grandmother's gotten injured or had some sort of catastrophic injury, which has led to surgery or bed rest in any form, then this video is for you. Uh, it's gonna tell a little bit of a story of why we should be concerned and what we can actually do to combat uh, sarcopenia as we uh, are in a hospital as well as when we leave a hospital. Why it's so important for us to be educated on that topic and a note that a lot of medical doctors don't consider and a lot of patients don't consider because they don't know the facts, they don't know the data, they don't know the science. So with that said, I won't take any more of your time, let's jump right into the video. Let's jump into a short, sweet, you know it, science-based video. Let's do it. Aging is an inevitable process, even if some of us work hard to avoid its effects, for better and for worse. One aspect relates closely with the ability to move, and while I have covered this particular aspect before, there is something unique to be said that many do not consider. Related loss of functionality can be devastating and end life prematurely, and it's an issue that many in the medical field fail to realize. Some people die soon after leaving the hospital. Let me repeat that. People die soon after leaving the hospital. That's odd because we think of a hospital as a place of healing, yet many aged individuals suffer by being in a hospital. That isn't to say hospitals are evil or in any way bad, as they are necessary for a host of different ailments, but as you advance in age, 60, 70, 80, and so on, you are more and more prone to debilitating, life-threatening issues post-hospitalization that are related to movement, or lack thereof. If you have surgery, or you are brought in for a severe illness, or whatever the reason might be, you're going to be immobilized and told to stay in bed for days or weeks. While many doctors see this as beneficial, and in certain ways it absolutely is, there is a massive drawback as muscle and structural tissue that depend on the stresses of weight bearing will begin to degrade multiplicitously. So, you aren't imagining you're feeling weaker. You are weaker, and substantially so. With protein degradation accelerated, you've lost structural units that make up your functional ability to move. Unfortunately, elderly individuals often do not recover from this loss, and family members that are close to their loved ones are doing them a disservice by keeping them in bed upon the release from the hospital. The body is designed to be stressed, especially in short intervals. All that said, we need to push the mentality of frailty to the fringes and focus on rehabilitating motion when possible. A 75-year-old that goes in for a procedure should be encouraged to engage in physical activity, as simple as walking, the moment they are cleared to do so. This is common in heart attack recovery, but should be implemented worldwide throughout every hospital for any procedure requiring bed rest. If rehab does not occur swiftly, or not at all, an older individual will lose more functionality in a few days than they would have lost in years. Imagine how much that can destroy life. Tuesday, you can walk alone. Friday, you're using a cane for the rest of your life. In most cases, this is preventable reversible and can extend life, so striving for pre-injury or pre-procedure mobility or even surpassing it 
is the goal every patient should have, regardless of age, but especially for the elderly, as a single moment should not define nor cut down the final decade or more of their life. Movement matters. As you can see, sarcopenia is a very real issue. And the better educated we are about it, and of course there's gonna be different definitions. Some people think it's a pathological disorder. Other people just consider it part of the aging process. So not necessarily a pathology, just part of our general aging physiology. And whether you're on one side or the other, it's still important to be educated and understand how sarcopenia, especially later on in life, you know, not necessarily in your 30s and 40s, but especially when you're in your 60s, 70s, and 80s and beyond, that it can have a severe, severe impact and actually shorten your life substantially. And it doesn't have to be that way. So uh, if you do feel like you got some value out of this video, if you feel like uh, you could share it with somebody who's gone through uh, an, a traumatic event, a physically traumatic event, and they're in the hospital or they've been in the hospital, they've been having trouble recovering, then uh, consider sharing it with them. You know, see, see what their thoughts are. And of course, always uh, make sure to let me know. I would love to hear your feedback as well. All right, with that said, you can also check out the article, which has all my science-based references and further details on sarcopenia, and it is linked down below. Okay, I hope I have the pleasure of seeing you in the very next video. Have a good one, guys. See ya.